2,000 years ago, the Gospels tell us the Roman Empire crucified Jesus of Nazareth. His battered body was then wrapped in a simple burial shroud. For centuries, many believed this 14-foot piece of linen was that cloth. A piece of fabric that is demonstrably hand-woven containing a surface anomaly in the shape and form of a crucified man. The evidence of a scourged man who was crucified and who died of postural asphyxia and cardiopulmonary failure is clear-cut. You can visually see these serum stains around the blood stains that were never visible until our team photographed the shroud with UV fluorescence photography approximately 2,000 years after this man ostensibly was was killed. Dr. Alan Wang has studied that and found that the blood type is type AB. They believed that they had proved the carbon dating wrong because the section from where the samples were taken had been tainted with 16th century cotton fibers. I can't believe it. He says they were right. The uh, leptin or the uh, widow's mite struck by Pontius Pilate uh, in uh, the years uh, in 29 AD to 33 we can identify the, the images of them, and so we can identify the particular coin. They found that there were traces of this particular very rare limestone on the shroud, which is only found in ancient tombs in Jerusalem and nowhere else known on planet Earth. It's actually called Tragatine Aragonite, and that's Dr. Avinoam Danin, a botany professor at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. He found Zygophyllum dumosum, the spores of that plant, and he found Guandelia 2040. Spores and pollen are plants found only in Jerusalem. Three-dimensional relief, the front and the back of a whole human being. Only one in the world, no other. The shroud image is made from tiny fibers that are one-tenth the size of human hair. To do this, you would need an incredibly accurate atomic laser. This technology does not exist. So we estimated that it would be about two to three hundred megabyte. But it proved to be that most of the negatives had information up to one gigabyte. It's important to realize that no other two-dimensional image in existence has been shown to contain three-dimensional holographic information. The hologram does a remarkable job of uh, emphasizing the certain features uh, on the shroud. We can clearly see there is no distortion of the dorsal or backside image. The fact supports Isabel Pitzik's theory of a true event horizon. Had the body been lying on rock when the image was formed, distortion would have been unavoidable. And Dame Isabel Pitzik, a particle physicist, believes the shroud has brought science to the threshold of a whole new understanding of physics. The muscles of the body are absolutely not crushed against the, the stone of the tomb. It means that the body is hovering between the two sides of the shroud. Now, we're actually getting on to how did that image get there? We, we now know how the image got there because of the work of Dr. August Assetter. That he noticed that the hands appeared to be like x-rays. So he thought that the whole of the shroud image was caused by radiation. He injected himself the radioactive material, uh, stood in front of an x-ray plate, and then put the plate in front of the VPA image analyzing computer, and for the first time in history, produced a three-dimensional image from a two-dimensional x-ray. The image on the shroud has been scientifically proved to be caused by radiation. There is no paint on the shroud, whatever. It is caused by radiation, nuclear radiation. Jesus took Peter, James and John, his brother, led them up on a high mountain by themselves and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as light. Uh, this is described in uh, Matthew 17 verses 1 to 3. In, in 1 John 1 verse 5 it says, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Psalm 104, first two verses, it says that God is clothed in light. This is Moses going up Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments from God. His face glowed with light. Now it lasted a few days. 
and then it wore off. So when you come into contact with God, your, your face shines with light. And here I'm, making a, I'm taking a leap of faith here and saying that the shroud of Turin was in contact with the resurrected Jesus Christ and glowed with light, which may be how the shroud, the image actually got onto the shroud in the first place. Everybody thinks that the tomb signifies death. Not at all, the exact opposite. The shroud and the tomb signifies an unbelievable beginning. There is something the science knows as singularity. That this is exactly what started the universe in the Big Bang. We have nothing less in the tomb of Christ than the beginning of a new universe.